With just days to go until 2025, the space community is eagerly awaiting the launch of the upgraded Block 2 hardware. Unlike the first version, Starship version 2 features notable upgrades, especially increased thrust. This is indeed a game-changer for Elon Musk's ambitious goal of colonizing Mars. And the key to this enhanced power lies in the new third version of the Raptor rocket engine. So are you curious about this special and powerful Raptor version? Let's find out in today's episode. Anyway, thank you for helping us reach 88,000 subscribers. Our next goal is 100,000, and we need your support to get there. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. We appreciate your help. Thank you. Rocket engines are widely regarded as the most challenging components to design and build in the aerospace industry due to a combination of complex engineering requirements and extreme operating conditions. The intricacies involved in rocket engine engineering span several scientific disciplines, including fluid dynamics, thermodynamics, mechanical engineering, and chemical engineering. One of the primary challenges is optimizing the engine's performance, which is crucial for achieving the desired thrust and efficiency. This involves selecting the right fuel oxidizer combinations that yield lightweight exhaust molecules, which enhances exhaust velocity and specific impulse, the measure of how effectively a rocket uses its propellant. The development of new engine technologies was once slow, with many advancements remaining stagnant since the 1960s. The complexity of building rocket engines has forced many aerospace companies to opt to purchase engines from established manufacturers, rather than build on their own. For example, United Launch Alliance had relied on the Russian RD-180 rocket engine for a while to power its retired Atlas V rocket. Even when producing the next-generation rocket, Vulcan Centaur, the company has ordered the BE-4 engines from Blue Origin to power Vulcan's first stage. This has a major disadvantage as you have no control over the supplier's delivery speed, resulting in delays in your tasks. That's the case of ULA's Vulcan Centaur, which hit many delays and setbacks over four years, partly due to the fault of ULA's partner, Blue Origin. Blue Origin originally indicated that the first BE-4 engines would be delivered to ULA in summer 2021, but the delivery was delayed. ULA had to wait over a year to receive the first two BE-4 engines. Moreover, if your company follows the approach of continuous innovation in rocket development, outsourcing is truly not a good idea. You cannot control every aspect of the rocket's design, performance, and cost. You can't just experiment and blow them up. That explains why SpaceX chose a different path from other manufacturers from the beginning, developing a rocket engine on its own. This unique approach, while more time-consuming and labor-intensive, paid off handsomely. A series of groundbreaking Raptor rocket engine versions. SpaceX started its journey with the first version of the Raptor, or the Christmas tree version in a funny word, it is the third rocket engine in history, designed with a full-flow staged combustion fuel cycle, and the first such engine to power a vehicle in flight. The engine is powered by cryogenic liquid methane and liquid oxygen, a mixture known as methalox. The use of this propellant aligns with Musk's vision of Mars colonization, given that it is easier to store, beneficial for reusability because leaves less residue in the engines compared to kerosene. More importantly, it can be produced on Mars. Due to its bulky and complex appearance, Elon Musk decided to simplify Raptor 1, and since then, we have Raptor 2. The turbo machinery, chamber, nozzle, and electronics were all redesigned. Many flanges were converted to welds, while other parts were deleted. Simplifications continued after production began. Hard work paid off. Raptor 2 is significantly lighter than Raptor 1, with Raptor 1 having a mass of 2,000 kilograms and Raptor 2 being 1,600 kilograms. Reducing the mass of rocket engines is a breakthrough because it reduces the dead mass of the rocket, simplifies manufacturing, saves costs, 
and shortens maintenance time between flights. Besides that, Raptor 2's production pace increased significantly. By 18 December 2021, Raptor 2 had started production, but until November 2022, SpaceX produced more than one Raptor a day and had created a stockpile for future launches. For SpaceX, cutting excess detail on the Raptor also benefits engine performance. The biggest change to Raptor 2 is an almost 25% increase in maximum nominal thrust over Raptor 1 from around 185 to 230 tons. Raptor 2 also contains design improvements throughout to enable sustained, reliable operation at chamber pressures up to 300 bar, 20% higher than Raptor 1. Despite of the incredible features on Raptor 2, SpaceX wasn't done yet. Raptor 3 was introduced to the world via Elon Musk's tweet on August. The Raptor 3 engine appears sleek and straightforward, yet it conceals immense power beneath its black exterior. In a tweet, Elon Musk highlighted the significant effort involved in simplifying the Raptor engine, integrating secondary flow paths, and incorporating regenerative cooling for exposed components. Visually, the smaller systems present in Raptor 1 and Raptor 2 have largely been removed, leaving only a few robust pipes alongside larger, more unified systems. This change suggests that complex and vulnerable elements have either been eliminated or consolidated, thereby minimizing various risks. To achieve this integration, SpaceX opted for welding instead of using screws or flanges. This welding approach helps unify the engine systems and reduces the likelihood of operational errors. Additionally, Musk noted that many components are now 3D metal printed into the wall of the part. Thanks to these innovations, Raptor 3 features an enhanced cooling system that effectively manages the heat and pressure generated by the engine's thrust. This upgrade offers a significant advantage. Raptor 3 no longer requires a heat shield, which eliminates both the mass and complexity associated with heat shields as well as fire suppression systems. In response to everyday astronaut on social media, Musk reiterated that everything is regeneratively cooled, further emphasizing the engine's streamlined design. In earlier versions, the heat shield was crucial due to the presence of numerous vulnerable systems. However, it was unable to fully protect the engine, as demonstrated by the damage sustained by super heavy engines during all four flights. Additionally, the heat shield contributed to the overall mass of the rocket. By eliminating it, SpaceX showcases significant confidence in the new design, ensuring that the engines are durable enough to endure the harsh conditions of flight and testing. This modification aligns with SpaceX's objective of optimizing its rockets by reducing weight. While reducing mass is a notable improvement, many are looking forward to the enhanced power of Raptor 3. Elon Musk confirmed this in a tweet, stating that it is lighter, has more thrust, and has higher efficiency than Raptor 2. SpaceX later shared additional tweets comparing the specifications of all three Raptor versions. To provide context, let's revisit a test conducted mid-2023. Musk revealed impressive results from this test, where Raptor 3 achieved 269 tons, 593,000 pounds of thrust. This capability would allow Super Heavy, equipped with 33 Raptor engines, to generate a total thrust of 8,877 tons, 19.5 million pounds. Moreover, Raptor 3 reached a chamber pressure of up to 350 bars, surpassing all other existing engines. This performance clearly exceeds the thrust capabilities of both Raptor 1 and Raptor 2. Currently, Starship's liftoff thrust already doubles that of the Saturn V rocket, and with Raptor 3's introduction, those figures are set to become even more impressive. However, during an April presentation, Musk surprised many by revealing that Raptor 3 has different specifications compared to last year's test results. Specifically, he introduced Raptor 3 with a thrust capacity of up to 280 tons at sea level and 306 tons in a vacuum. SpaceX also highlighted a specific impulse of 350 seconds, 
an engine weight of 1.525 tons, and a combined mass for engine and vehicle side components of 1,720 kilograms. With this thrust capability, Super Heavy with 33 engines can achieve a maximum thrust of 9,240 tons, 20.37 million pounds while Starship can reach a thrust of 1,758 tons, 3.88 million pounds, maintaining its status as the most powerful spacecraft. Nevertheless, this may not satisfy SpaceX engineers who are eager to further upgrade this version. Musk stated, the fundamental architecture is now right, but we will still make thousands of improvements. Now, space enthusiasts are holding their breath as they await Raptor 3's debut in 2025. 2025 will also start up with Starship Flight 7. SpaceX's Starship Flight 7 is poised to be a significant milestone in the ongoing development of the next-generation Starship rocket. According to documents filed with the Federal Aviation Administration, Flight 7 is targeted to lift off from Texas in the early morning hours of January 11, 2025. This timing will allow a NASA aircraft to capture and record thermal imagery of Starship's re-entry, which will occur during nighttime over the Indian Ocean. Starship Flight 7 will serve several critical objectives as part of SpaceX's iterative testing approach. One of the primary objectives is to achieve a successful separation between the Super Heavy booster and the Starship spacecraft. This step is crucial for validating the rocket's performance during ascent. Shortly after separation, the Super Heavy booster will be recovered to reinforce its commitment to reusability. This recovery process is vital for reducing costs and increasing launch frequency. The flight will further test the upper stage of Starship under orbital conditions, providing valuable data on its performance and capabilities in space. Elon Musk has hinted at attempting a controlled landing for the Starship after its flight, which would be another step toward refining landing technologies. The significance of Starship Flight 7 extends beyond its immediate objectives. It plays a pivotal role in preparing for future missions. The Starship system is integral to NASA's Artemis 3 mission, scheduled for 2027, which aims to return humans to the moon and mark a historic moment by landing the first woman and the first person of color on lunar soil. Additionally, SpaceX envisions utilizing Starship for Mars exploration and colonization efforts as part of Elon Musk's broader vision of making humanity a multiplanetary species. As preparations continue for Flight 7, SpaceX is also focusing on ensuring that all systems are ready for potential challenges during the flight. The company's iterative approach allows it to learn from each test flight and make necessary adjustments before subsequent launches. With an evolving timeline and clear objectives aimed at enhancing rocket performance and reusability, this mission will not only contribute to SpaceX's goals, but also support NASA's Artemis program and future interplanetary endeavors. As excitement builds around this upcoming flight, both SpaceX and space enthusiasts worldwide are eager to see how these advancements will shape the future of space travel. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.